Okay, hi everyone. So today we're going to make a quick video on work now, grieve later. Um, before we begin, we're going to start off with a quick definition. Um, what is a grievance? And I've talked about this before in the past in my videos. Um, you can dig through them. But basically a grievance is um, a work challenge or situation um, that may possibly be a CBA violation. Um, and if it is a CBA violation, it may in fact be grievable. And so, um, before we begin on this quick video, um, I want to stress the importance of understanding your job classification and description. Now, these two things are so very important because if you understand what your job classification is in your description then you have a full understanding of what your job obligations and duties are to the employer and yes these are your your understanding your job description to the fullest is your obligation as an employee so if you don't know what your job description is and what you have to actually perform and do every single day i want to encourage you to print out your job description and review it and that way You'll hit two birds with one stone. Actually, you it will make you a better employee. And two, you will know when they're screwing you over. So, that being said, I always say stand up, speak up, fight back, and uphold your CBA. So, when you understand your job classification and description, then this is possible. So, if you don't know it, print it out, review it, get familiar with it. Now, let's get right into it. Work now, grieve later basically just means if your immediate supervisor gives you a demand and you believe it to be out of your job description, work through the demand, okay? Work through the demand. Um, please don't make the mistake like many union members do. They actually become insubordinate. They tell the boss off and they say, absolutely not, I'm not doing this. They get a little attitude and they tell them, you know what? That's not part of my job description. Well, first of all, they're your boss. So you can't really do that because you become insubordinate. Second, um, you're giving your employer an opportunity to, for them to write you up, okay? And I want you guys to be very mindful about your job description. I want you guys to notice how sometimes they're written very vaguely and that's obviously done on purpose. So um, be careful. You always want to follow through with the demand and then grieve it later. Um, what's an example? Well, um, an example of this, and I'm going to use, you know, um, school terminology because I work with schools at a school district. But let's just say if you're a paraeducator, right, and your immediate supervisor tells you to go wash recycling bins outside in the yard or um, to wash trash cans. Well, you know. <laughs> That's definitely not part of a paraeducator's job description. Um, but if you may possibly face disciplinary action if you tell them no, and that's not part of your job description because then you'd be insubordinate. So please, please, please be very careful about when you're going to stand up um, and um, protest the demand. Okay, and so when when you work through a demand and you grieve it later, what usually will, you would want to do is just work through the demand and then once you get off work or you go on break, you want to call your um, chapter president, your chief union steward, and your labor representation right away. And then you email them. And you, you want to work with the time stipulations when you reach out to them because that's why we have a CBA in place. Employees should not be working out of job descriptions and I mean job classifications. That is why we have a CBA and that is why it's so important to understand your job description. So they would then contact, you know, human resources and look into it. And they're pretty good about that. They, you know, they were they're pretty good about that. Um so that's that. Um and so when can you protest a demand? It's just doable without facing possible um, disciplinary action. Absolutely, it sure is. And the the three times, the three examples that you can actually protest a demand without facing disciplinary action is one when your 
your immediate supervisor is asking you to do an illegal thing or you believe it to be illegal. Two, um, your immediate supervisor is asking you to um, do something that's an unsafe working condition or you believe it to be an unsafe working condition. Or three, if you have already previously discussed this with your union representation and they're asking you again to work out of classification. And the trick here to the third point is that you have to have things in writing. So if your your uh, union representation has already told you not to do whatever it is you're complaining about and you have it in writing, by all means, go ahead and protest it. Okay, so let's get into it. I'll give you guys a few examples. Um, Steph, what do you mean by an illegal demand Well, or a belief to an illegal demand? And again, I'm using school terms, but feel free to apply this to your own job. You know, um, an illegal, so what is the one? Okay, so let's say if you're a paraeducator and your immediate supervisor is asking you to dispense medications. Yes, in fact, paraeducators, some of them are trained to do intrusive medical procedures. Yes, they are. But if you've never been trained to do any medical procedure and your immediate supervisor is asking you to do this, it can be illegal because one, you're putting the student's life in danger. Two, you've never been trained. And three, we are highly regulated, regulated by state and federal laws. And as a, as a school, if you work for schools, we're regulated by ERA, which falls under Ed Code, and that would be an Ed Code violation. That can be tied into other things like OSHA, safety violations, CBA violations, um, policy and board policy procedures. Um, so, yeah, that would be an example. We we're talking about when protesting a demand um, is doable without facing any repercussions, right? So we talked about... Um, the if you believe it to be an illegal situation or an illegal demand or it's an illegal demand you can protest it and then the second point was if you believe it to be an unsafe working condition or it's in fact an unsafe working condition an example of this would be and again i'm using school terms because i work with schools and, and that's just this terminology but apply it to wherever you feel it to be your case right so an unsafe working demand would be if your boss if you work for maintenance and operations and your immediate supervisor tells you to drive to a work site and fix whatever a b and c but you believe that the brakes on the car your work car or the work truck um are faulty you can protest this. You can say, I'm, I'm sorry with all due respect. My brakes aren't working. I can't do the job at the moment. Or, and this can apply to tools too. Like if you believe they're unsafe, um, you can protest unsafe working conditions. And again, we're highly regulated by state and federal laws. Not only does it become a contract violation it, or and board policy and state and federal laws. And so um, you can protest this. Um, the third point is if you already talked to your union representation about working out of classification and you know human resources has already been involved and your representation has already given you specific directives about not doing the requested demand that your immediate supervisor is doing, then you can protest it without facing any, you know, um, disciplinary action but please be sure that you have things in writing that's why I really love emails because it's a paper trail and it will help you at the end of the day with any type of sticky situation um, so yeah um, you can protest a demand if you believe it to be illegal or it's an illegal demand that your immediate supervisor is doing if you believe it to be an unsafe working condition or you've already talked about it and they're still asking you to do it you can protest that without facing repercussions um, I also want to reiterate the importance of being a good employee it is your responsibility um, to be an outstanding employee that means that you must understand your job description and your job classification and that if you are being instructed to do things that are illegal or you believe that they are illegal or you're being instructed to do things and they're unsafe or you believe it to be unsafe as a good employee it is your responsibility as well to give your employer a heads up and notice in writing as well um, I do believe in that I believe that not only should we be hard on the employer 
but the employees also have a, a responsibility um, and accountability to the employer. Um, it's not always about fighting the corporations because we do have to work to, together, um, but that's what taking pride in your work is also part of your job. So that means reporting the illegal or unsafe conditions um, and going through chain of command. And again, anytime you, you have any situations of working out of classification, you always want to contact you know your chapter president, your chief union steward, and your labor representation. You want to call them and follow up with an email and to work with time stipulations. Um, you know, it's so important to uphold your CBA, um, especially when it comes to working out of classification. And the only way you can do that is if you understand your job description. So again, print it out, get familiar with it. Um, and one thing that I really want to touch on, and this has not ever been my point. Um, and I'm trying to word it carefully. So when you do stand up to your immediate supervisor, when you're going to protest a demand, you really want to be very tactful and diplomatic. Um, yes, I am tough in my videos. I am very, you know, I curse like a sailor. But I want to assure every sister and brother out there that when I do negotiate with my own employers and I'm trying to, you know, improve my working conditions, I'm diplomatic and tactful at all times. This is so important because when you lose cool, first, they won't have any respect for you. Second, they have the power to write you up. Okay, and my whole point to this video is I want to give you guys the tools so that you guys understand the ins and outs and how you guys can avoid getting in trouble or facing disciplinary action, but yet sticking up for yourself. So yeah, that's so important. Be professional, be tactful, and um, yeah, stand up for yourself. You're a union member. It's your right. I hope this helps, and if you guys have any other questions, um, let me know, and I'll make another video soon. Talk to you later. Bye.